the Pikes? A powerful part of the Spice Cartel. Their criminal activities had allowed them to almost completely control the production of raw spice used to create a powerful drug. Were you expecting us? The underworld's a small community. I have no desire to oppose you. We come to join you. <laughs> we are happy to do business with either party, but we do not want to be taken advantage of by paying protection to both. What's up, Nerds? This video will be a complete breakdown of the Pike Syndicate, understanding their history stretching before the Battle of Naboo out to their movements on Tatooine, learning how their crime empire was organized, how they became spice lords, and held on to power through some of the most violent and turbulent decades in galactic history. There are powerful forces pushing all kinds of addictions to the denizens of the galaxy far, far away, but also here on Earth. That's why I want to thank this video's sponsor, BetterHelp. BetterHelp is not a crisis line, but nor is it fluffy self-help. It's professional therapy done securely online. A modern solution to barriers that have been with therapy since its inception. Now you can cut out all the transit time and rigid schedules of a physical office, using their app to connect you to their network of 20,000 licensed therapists from all over the globe. It is cheaper and more convenient, and you can start communicating in as little as 48 hours, with sessions being done through video calls, just normal phone calls, or even through text messages. Whichever you prefer, and you will be able to find a therapist that specializes in the particular issues you want to work on, all on a much more flexible schedule. And you can even send messages to your therapist at any time. And something that I did personally was I was able to change my therapist. It was really straightforward and simple. Again, all while being much more affordable than traditional methods, and financial help is available. BetterHelp wants to make therapy as practical and straightforward as possible. Start living a happier life today, be proactive, and head down to the link in the description, where you can get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash metanerds. That's betterhelp.com slash metanerds. I really hope this can help whoever needs it, but let's get back to the video. The story starts with the spice. The catch-all name, like drugs, that could be applied to anything from literal spices and foods, but also thousands of medical compounds across the galaxy. Bacta was not spice, a combination of bacterias that became universally recognized as a miracle healing fluid. But just about everything else was made from some form of spice. The problem was that it could be processed into a variety of uppers, downers, and psychedelics, and all with thousands of nuanced differences, to the point that every individual from every species could find some spice that clicked, and they could quickly become consumed by. Many things can be made out of spice, and they're not all good. In this time of war, our spice is refined into a medicine that saves people across the galaxy. Which Ahsoka knows is true, as we see when they had the shipment in their possession. Why not make the best of a bad situation, and deliver this spice to some place that can use it for medicine? Think of all the good you could do if we deliver the spice to some place else instead of the pikes. Interesting side note is that this may be an adverse effect of so many species being created by the Ricotta and Celestials building off a shared genetic template, which is why so many aliens have a humanoid form. And so like how all life on Earth shares genes, and drugs work across so many different species. So if you can become Lords of the Spice, you will quickly be able to build an addict population on nearly any world in the galaxy. This business is one of the oldest, but we see no evidence of the Pikes being major players in the trade during the time of the Old Republic. Roughly 25,000 BBY to 1,000 BBY, where it seems like the Huts dominated this vice trade, perfectly complementing the other pleasures one can indulge on in places like Nar Shadda. One of the Huts most fierce and powerful challengers to their authority was Zim the Despot, and he controlled the obscure Outer Rim world of Kessel. It seems that when he became Zim the Dead, some of his more remote and hidden holdings were lost to time, and this system would stay just outside of the area that would be consolidated into Hut space. Kessel was enveloped by the dangerous Achates Maelstrom, and was so effective at keeping things unexplored, that Palpatine's empire would place their most top secret facility within the Maul. And there were so many other worlds that provided spice, one of the largest being Ryloth, but even Naboo had lucrative mines. So the addicts in Huts didn't even know what they were missing out on, a world that would come to be seen as the best spice in the galaxy. The Kessel system was a single star system, with numerous planets, one of which was Obadiah, the homeworld of the Pike species. They would develop space travel, explore their solar system, and chart a way out of the deadly maze that surrounded them. Like a violent sea surrounding an island nation, this cut them off from the galaxy at large, which of course slowed their rate of technological advances, but also protected them from the violent history of Jedi, Sith, Mandalorians, and Huts. While others like the Nikto and Twi'lek would be oppressed by their Hut neighbors that dominated the Outer Rim. 
Their strangest discovery would be an alien population on the World Kessel, which must have been established by some sort of adventurous entrepreneur. Maybe he found this world listed in old maps of the ancient warlords in the Despot, and established a small kingdom here. Rill was the number one spice for millennia, so this person could have been a Twi'lek from the nearby Ryloth. Though we never see King Yoruba, but everybody in the palace is either Twi'lek or human, so I would guess he's one of these. And the architecture is distinctively not Pike. Just in case you were thinking what I did, and which seems more straightforward, that this was just a Pike in charge. Instead, it is explicitly stated that the Pikes discovered early spice mines on Kessel, and used their muscle and dominance of their solar system to take control of all the mining. I think the fact that he is left alive, and it is said that they came to an agreement, shows that the King must have had a deeper understanding of spice operations. And that the Pikes just made sure it kept flowing, and that no other forces wormed their way into the Maelstrom while making sure to keep remote access to the navigation buoys so that they could easily be shut down at a moment's notice, like a space drawbridge that could lock down the Pike Kingdom. When they took this Kessel variant of Spice to market, it started to immediately take over. Called Glitter Stim, by at least around 50 BBY onward, this euphoric upper effect was loved by countless species and was a staple in the dusty Outer Rim cantinas to the most glitzy clubs in the upper levels of Coruscant, but became an enormous problem down in the lower levels of the capital of the Republic. We were facing a full-scale war underneath the surface of Coruscant. But overtake Rill, the spice from Ryloth, as the drug of choice. And just to note, death sticks are one of the few illicit drugs not made from spice, instead it comes from a rare mushroom. Famous glitter stem spice heads include Figrin de Anne, a Bith musician that would plan out his tours so that he was always near a good quality spice den. High-ranking imps like Admiral Milton Tackle, Moff Moors, and even the strict and observant Tarkin had at least one ensign brazen enough to sneak some of it onto his carrion spike flagship. In the Kalth of the Hut video, I talked about how the Hut's dominance of the underworld came from securing the parts of space outside of large governments, like the Republic, or later Separatist and Empire, and they excelled at knowing just how far to push the envelope. Which politicians to blackmail, and how much intel to provide to larger governments, that were willing to leave the Huts in control of their little slice of slimy heaven. And at the technical level, the Huts owned countless legitimate shipping companies, and whole space stations, and planet-side space ports. As well as many of the other spice mines, excluding Kessel. It was like the Huts owned the drug farms, planes, boats, ports, and had politicians from the city to national level all in your pocket. But since the Pikes had the failsafe of being able to destroy the buoys and use the Maelstrom as a natural barrier, the Huts and Pikes found that they were both business-minded, relatively rational, and cool-headed. And so they quickly came to an agreement. The Pikes were able to retain a monopoly on Kessel and Glitter Stem, while Hut operations helped with the distribution. The mines on Kessel would grow deeper and deeper, eventually dozens of connected craters, then an entire section of Kessel that would become an orange haze as the green rainforest were stripped away. By 19 BBY, it would take up nearly half the world, ever growing over the following decades. And now the word Kessel was famous for intrigue and making criminals rich. I've heard pilots talk about this place. It's legendary. Yeah, it's legendary for its corruption. So that was by the year 19 BBY, but if we go back 13 years earlier, to 32 BBY, we can see the start of their meteoric rise when they applied their forces to act as assassins for Darth Tyrannus, shooting down sifo shuttle over the moon of Obadiah. Then, Chancellor Valorum's aide Silman was captured alive, and we see how the Pikes always sought to keep themselves protected and out of open conflict. The Pikes gave Tyrannus sifo but the Pikes did not tell Tyrannus of Silman. The Pikes needed... insurance. We give you Silman. You forget about the Pike's treachery. And when the Jedi arrived on this world, we see their hospitality on full display. The spice den in the Pike Palace has to have the best stuff in the galaxy. It was used to entertain and secure alliances from a who's who of the underworld, from several huts to Zygerian slavers and other high-ranking criminals, with Lom Pike hoping to keep things pleasant with even these virtuous monks. To friendship. <laughs> and even when provoked, they stay calm. We have no quarrel with the Jedi. And he gives into the Jedi's demands without opening fire, giving up Silman and exposing the connection to Darth Tyrannus, whom Lom identifies as Count Dooku when the Sith came in person to tie up this loose end. Pikes always willing to tie their fate to the more powerful organization. This left with the Pikes Tyrannus. Tyrannus? You are the man called Tyrannus? Minister Lom, if you're going to help us, now is the time. Kill Tyrannus! In this battle, Dooku would kill Lom, 
leading Marg Krim to take over and take the title the Illustrious Imperator. On both of these visits to Obadiah, we see how the ports are filled with guards and managers, and any ship trying to rip them off can be quickly detained by the tractor beams on fleets of patrol ships. We also see how spice runners use standard, ubiquitous ships like the Coruscant freighters and Gazanti cruisers, along with a bunch of G9 freighters, like the Twilight used by Anakin, popular with spice runners, and was in part why Uncle Owen told the half-truth that Luke's father was a pilot on a spice running ship. No, my father didn't fight in the wars, he was a navigator on a spice freighter. During Maul's takeover of Mandalore, the Pikes got a masterclass in manipulation and how to avoid conflict. When they heard that Maul and Savage were working with Death Watch Mandalorians, who were so good at negotiations that they were able to get the Black Sun Crime Syndicate to join forces with them in just a few seconds, with the novel approach of chopping off the heads of their entire leadership, the Pikes thought it would be wise to voluntarily come as an ally. That was before Dooku came to Obadiah, and Lom would be there in person working with Maul's forces. With the Shadow Collective, the coalition of all the other criminals turning to challenge the long, unchallengeable Huts. Your lives, in exchange for Hut space and everything in its borders. This battle was unlike anything now Hutta had ever seen. A Hut council member was killed, and the rest fled, only to have them eventually come to the same conclusion as the Pikes. Better to work with these horned Sith Lords. Maul promised that once they took Mandalore, they could turn the entire underworld, Hut Empire, and Mando military against the Republic. The spice would flow like never before if this could be pulled off. Instead of spice, they smuggled themselves into Mandalore, bursting forth with blasters, making it appear like each syndicate was carving up this world for themselves. An invasion of criminals that Pre Vizsla was seen to defeat. The Pikes witnessed firsthand how complex manipulation of the public with some crisis could cause the masses to beg for your preferred leader. Maul allowing Vizsla to be seen as the legitimate leader, only for him to use their culture and customs to take power from him, and then put a nice Mandalorian face on it while Maul ran from the shadows. The Pikes were taking notes. In the final months of the war, Marg Krim would be leading when the Battle of Mandalore ousted Maul, and always going with the flow, the Pikes were courting the new empire. They knew this force was not to be messed with, and Imperial officials proposed a mutually beneficial relationship. The mining of spice required a steady supply of slaves, something the Huts helped with, and just a proximity to preferred slave populations like the Wookiee and Twi'lek homeworlds. And of course you could pick up humans anywhere, but if you really wanted to expand, it would be nice to have this all simplified. The Empire entered into an agreement to streamline the slave pipeline, providing as many as the pikes needed, in exchange for the spice needed for medicinal purposes, as well as some other minerals that could be mined here. This would only be a tiny portion of the slaves captured for use for other Imperial projects, from simple bases all the way up to the Death Star. In these conditions, your average slave would only last six months to a year. They loved the powerful species like the Wookiees and Gigaran, even if their fur coats in this muggy and boiling atmosphere led to even shorter lifespans. The pikes that managed the mines, like Kwe Tolsite, down to the countless sentinels that made sure the slaves were all in order, all had to wear protective gear to survive on this world that was growing more inhospitable with each year, as those forests gave way to more and more mines. These long cloaks are lined with lead to protect them from radiation generated from the mining process, and a complex breathing apparatus was connected to the tubes on their face, taking away exhales while making sure each breath was from a clean atmosphere bottle that could be plugged in. Besides the smog, radiation, and potent drug that was in the air, even if only in trace amounts in the unrefined state, there was also a corrosive dust that worked its way into everything, damaging equipment from breathing devices down to the blasters. The facilities would be controlled from these centers, which themselves were filled with computers in another layer of a slave droid force to operate it all. We talked about how droid pain and fear make sense for these advanced AIs, and with C-3PO we can see that this planet, the exact opposite of an oil bath, led to horror stories being spread to droids all across the galaxy. We'll be sent to the spice mines of Kessel or smashed into who knows what. Tunnels would pursue the best veins of Kesselstone, these rocks that would be examined for signs of pre-spice mineral indicators. And to make it all more lucrative, one of the byproducts of this mining was that it freed pockets of fuel called Kesseline, the cheap fuel source that was used to great efficiency by using it to power the machines to mine even further. The smog was toxic, and was another factor that shortened the slaves' lifespan, but the ones behind the breathing apparatus couldn't care less. And thus, the Pikes would continue to grow under the Empire, in its final years, and 3ABY being invited to an auction by Lady Kira of Crimson Dawn. 
She had been growing the organization after decades of playing the second in command, but with Voss and Maul gone, the Lady of the Dawn had been trying to destroy the Empire by emboldening other crime syndicates. Her plot involved stealing the carbonite frozen body of Han Solo from Boba Fett while he was on Nar Shadda, stopping on his way to Tatooine to deliver it to Jabba. When Crimson Dawn invites Jabba to the auction of Solo, he gets in contact with the ruling council to see how they should respond to the surprise resurgence of the organization that once earned their respect. When they all arrived, they were just as shocked as everyone else to see how big this party was, and how powerful the Dawn still was. As one of the Pikes said, that invitation we received implied this would be a private meeting, but look around. Every syndicate in the galaxy here, even the blasted Empire. Boba had to fight his way past his greatest rivals and sees Vader arrive there personally. He orders his men to take Solo, even though Jabba had won the auction with a million credit bid. The other huts are furious at this public insult to their authority, and though Jabba tries to calm them down, understanding Vader's power, Boku the Hut had long been compromised by the cult-like reverence of the Crimson Dawn, as even the Emperor was shocked to learn that he had numerous high-ranking Imperials, even royal guards, that had been brainwashed to worship the Lady of the Dawn. Boku called on all of the Hut Council ships to open fire on Vader's Super Star Destroyer, and somehow it went even worse than you'd think. Not a humiliating and immediate vaporizing death by turbo laser. Instead, Vader boarded the council ship to kill them all himself. Luckily for Jabba, he left right after the auction, and was already on Tatooine before the smoke cleared. He confirms to Boba that all of the ruling council was gone. He was the highest ranking hut in the galaxy now. So when Jabba was killed just a few months later, it left the cartel power in the hands of hut entrepreneurs like Kaltho and other low-level slug relatives like the twins. But Crimson Dawn would stay active, as well as Black Sun and other crime syndicates. The Pikes are always cautious and attach themselves to larger players, but it seems in this era of the sudden vacuum of Hut and Imperial rule, the Pikes may be making a play to at least consolidate the Spice Triangle, hyper routes that connected Rune, Ryloth, and Tatooine. They had always controlled the traffic of this area, but now it looks like they were taking a page from Maul's playbook, and using layers of deception to become the secret rulers of Tatooine letting the people keep their mayor, while using the smaller criminal groups to play their role in sowing chaos and framing them as Boba's enemy. Using the Kintan Striders biker gang the same way Maul once used the smaller pikes to ascend to his throne. And like with Maul or the Huts, the leader had to know that in order to keep the business booming, he couldn't be stingy with the credits when it came to muscle. Employing Cad Bane, the man who was the greatest bounty hunter in the galaxy in between the eras of the two Fets, and struck a deal that was appealing enough to turn all of the city districts against their daimyo, and securing the rare Scorpionek Annihilator droids, a separatist unit that one saw use towards the end of the Clone Wars, and was originally just used to defend the terrifying Colicoid homeworld, the ones that also made the Droidica. With all these factors, victory seemed guaranteed, but the Force was not with them on this endeavor. As Boba led the forces in the city, Fennec Shand showed why she was in many people's top 5 bounty hunter list, at least since the time of the Imperial Era onward, using her stealth and weapon mastery to take out this Pike Command outpost. Of course, the entire Pike Syndicate was not destroyed here on Tatooine, and we can only guess that if they are trying to take over the role of the Huts, and if they were growing the most lucrative vice trade in the galaxy for decades, paying for hordes of foot soldiers, bounty hunters, and droids, I would guess this battle is just the start of a much larger war. So that's it for their complete breakdown, but you definitely want to hear these cool facts and behind the scenes stuff. I only recently realized that it was the entire Hut Council that died, that Jabba was the last OG left. And so when he died off, of course this is why it took the low-level twins so long to show up. And I think this helps both the theory that some rich hut like Kaltho was stepping up to become a new lord, or that the pikes may be particularly emboldened. The pikes were designed by George Lucas himself, and were introduced in the episode Eminence of the Clone Wars. And the original four-arc episode to follow Ahsoka after she left the Order was called Ahsoka's Walkabout. And like what we finally got, it originally did focus on a run-in with the Pike Syndicate. And Walkabout is a reference to an aboriginal rite of passage, where a teen goes to live in the wilderness for months. Now the look of the pikes is one of the weirdest design disappointments I've felt. Ahsoka's short montrails are just justified as being a practical restraint, which isn't a great answer either, but with the pikes, just focusing on these breathing tubes, in the Clone Wars they are two tubes with very open and obvious holes, and Solo is basing these cool costumes off of this. But then Book of Boba just has these two things that look like antennas, we didn't even recognize them as pikes at first. There's no obvious hole even, so I don't know what these are supposed to be or why this happened. It definitely seems to be a deliberate design choice, and not some sort of practical restraint. As for the info used in this video, a lot of it comes from the Essential Atlas, Solo Guide, 
War of the Bounty Hunters comic series, Ultimate Star Wars, and Alien Archive. Be sure to check out the links down below for affiliate links to free audiobooks from Audible, and amazing metal print art from Displate, as well as links to our Patreon and PayPal. Especially our $25 tier supporters, Bill Payne, Brandon Robinson, Oscar Jones, and Renee Flores. But most important of all, remember, he who controls the spice controls the universe. And the Force will be with you. Always.